One important distinction I'd like to make is the difference between the way effects plug in sound directly on a channel as opposed to a send and return bus. I've had several new producers ask me over the years why their drums don't pop as hard as they'd like, and one of the first things I'll do when I look at their session is to see how they've routed their effects. I'm going to show you an example using the snare track from our loop. You'll notice here, I'm going to play it dry for you first so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, just a basic snare. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the ping pong delay on it. Now I'm going to turn the feedback down a little bit. Now you would think that if we had the dry wet ratio set to 50%, you would hear the effect and the dry signal equally, right? Well, let me show you what happens when you turn it up. Notice how the snare starts to be a little more subdued? Well, that's what happens with this particular effect. Let me show you what happens when you take the same effect and you put it on the send and return bus. Create a brand new return track. And what I'll do is I'll put ping pong delay on that. All right. And then what we'll do is we will send that to bus B. Now watch what happens as I turn up the uh, wet-dry ratio. See, the snare still sounds punchy, and that's the difference between a channel effect and a bus effect. So be sure to know what type of sound you're looking for before you use effects. If you're looking for something that will make your sound a little more subdued, then try effects on the channel. If you want to retain the punch and clarity, then be sure to use a send and return bus. It really can make all the difference in the world to your final mix.